something wrong with my foot, detective? You're not wearing socks. And that bothers you? I'm a, little, I'm a little germaphobic. Really? Wow. See? Breakthrough. <laughs> you having nightmares? No. Flashbacks to the incident? Nope. Emotional numbness? No. Nope. Irritability? Nope. Nope. How do you feel about your partner? Well, you don't want two detectives looking at the same evidence the same way, right? Well, Detective Lynch, in my professional opinion, you are not suffering from post-traumatic stress. I'm going to clear you. Congratulations. Thank you. Detective, you can go. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I think the ideal mother would be someone who would want great things for their daughter. But also, <laughs> fuck, fuck. But also, um, love them without the great things. Do you really want to know how I'm doing? Yes. I'm doing great. <laughs> I'm working out. I'm seeing a therapist. ground myself in the other person so like if I'm doing a scene with you that's intimate I'm gonna go to you for all my to bring me down and give me a purpose and make it intimate then it's not that I forget that there's other things happening or other cameras or cameras and people it's that it's not relevant it's not important look to the other actor I find that really makes me present and you can also just do grounding exercises like uh, you know standing breathing and you do four things you can see Three things you can hear, two things you can feel, one thing you like about yourself. On set is so different from auditioning. I think they're two different, two different skills. But on set, I really like to use everything that's there. So the background, the anything like if there's a photo of whoever I'm talking to and I notice it in the scene, I look at that photo because it brings me into the moment and it makes me present. You're in a good place when you're starting because you can change the way that you interact with casting directors from the beginning. They've invited you to come in, and you have every right to be there. And you're, you have every right also to make a mistake. And you're just presenting, this is what I might do. You know, if you hire me, this is, this is what I might do. But don't put yourself in a lower position, because especially 20 years from now, you'll see how little power they actually have. I know the lines as well as I can, so that I don't worry about that. I do. I breathe right before I go in. You can do where you stand like this for two minutes. It's supposed to send your body a signal of confidence. But then, same thing is like when you get in the room, take a deep breath, look around, be in the room, feel your feet, look at the other actor, and now you're here to do something with that person. And that you can do. You know what I mean? These performing, maybe you don't feel like you can, but you can tell that person, I love you. You know what I mean? And mean it. Your agent works for you. It won't feel like it, but they do. Um, so you have every right to ask questions and expect a response. And if you don't get one, maybe you can't get another agent, maybe you can, I don't know, but you should know that you deserve better and that you're not getting it. I really encourage you to write your own material. Make yourself a short film, put yourself in it. It's just as valuable as going out and auditioning every day. In fact, more valuable because people will see you do good work in a real context. 
And also, then you'll become a filmmaker, and that has its own rewards, and that has its own path as well. So I think, because auditioning, you know, you'll go out at first, and you're not going to get to do monologues, and you're not going to get to, like, show them what you can do. You're going to be going like, oh, thank you, sir, you know, for a while. Hopefully not, but maybe. So do your own thing and keep your own passions up. You have your own creative abilities and viewpoint, and you don't have to kowtow to the roles that are available. You can make your own, and you should. When I started, I, I, I remember I went to a class, and she was a very good teacher, but she told me, this is your hit, and your hit is you're the girl next door. Not once in my life, I'm always the crazy bitch or some <laughs> other thing, like, always. You know, and she's like, you're higher class, and I've ne I never play that either. I'm always, like, I mean, once in a while, but very rare, so it's just, so you got to be so careful of listening to what, you know, people have opinions, but trust your own first, always your own judgment, and listen too, because there's a lot of good advice out there too, obviously. I mean, you know, you're always learning, hopefully. The stronger your objective, the more excited you are to play it, the easier it'll be. So not just like, it needs to be strong, but it also needs to be fun. It needs to appeal to you. I, I read somewhere, oh, it's in this great David Mamet book, he says, you should, you know, your objective should be, you should go into a scene like you're going to a hot date. And, and you should, even if it's a terrible scene, even if you're going to bawl your eyes out, you should be kind of excited. You know what I mean? Because something about it is, is fun. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> good. <laughs> no, that's good. If you're like me and you like to do your best and you feel like it should always be my best, well, auditions don't give you that opportunity because you often get the material the night before, you know, and then maybe it's really long and maybe you had something else to do and maybe you're not ready. So, or maybe you're nervous, or for whatever reason, it's not what you want it to be, but it's never as bad as you think, and it doesn't make any difference to your career as a whole. One bad audition, your career can withstand, so don't worry about it. Even a bunch, even a bunch, it can withstand, and it will. So the more you can just think of it just, you know, when you go into, it helps me when I go into an audition to just think, I'm just here to work. This is like a rehearsal. I'm just going to show you a little bit of what I might do. And you'll like it or you won't, and it's not going to be about me because it's either going to be about that I have the wrong hair color or I'm the wrong height or you just don't like me or you just like somebody better. It's not going to be about, I just didn't totally believe her. You know what I mean? Like, it's not going to be, you know, and if you drop a line, that's fine. I don't know what that was. If you drop a line, that's fine. Nobody cares about that either. Just pick it up. You know, you've got your script. Just pick it up and keep going. If you stay present and you stay playing your objective, they will go with you and they will like it. The most important thing, again, is just to be present. And I don't mind the redirect because I feel like all of a sudden, oh, I'm talking to the director. He's not just a dude sitting there scaring the shit out of me. Now we're having a conversation and it's much closer to working, which is better. So then it's like, oh, okay. And I will take that opportunity to ask questions if I have them to make sure I really understand the, the direction before I do it. And that seems to work pretty well for me. And a direction's good, you know, and take it and feel free to really you don't have to be stuck with what you brought in, you know? You really don't, because uh, sometimes the best thing you'll do is to take it a whole nother way. I generally tend to get off book as much as I can, and then, but I always hold my pages because sometimes I forget, and then at least then, and if I'm keeping track, like the important thing is don't, sometimes it's like I'll hold my pages and I'll realize I haven't been flipping them. So when I lose that line, I'm like, I have no idea where that is, <laughs> and then that's no good. So if you hold them and you're not looking at them, just make sure you're keeping with your pages so that if you lose that line, you know where to find it and you can just pick it up again. But yeah, I always keep them for that reason because nerves might make you miss a line or, you know, sometimes it's just a lot of material really fast really make, put out your own thing because you know you make one short film then all of a sudden you're nominated for a couple Leo awards then you're in that room with people and they're seeing maybe you go up and receive one or maybe not they're seeing your name that you've been nominated it's like the, the amount of exposure you get from one thing that you make yourself even though it's an enormous amount of work um, is, is better than a hundred auditions you're gonna do. I started writing again four years ago because I had a good idea for a TV show, which so I thought, oh, well, I'll just write it just for fun. I wasn't working that much. So I did, and then, um, long story short, uh, HBO Canada was looking at it last year for about six months, and they eventually passed, but it was exciting, and it brought in enough other interest that I've got a, a good director on board and also someone else to come in and help me write it and show run who's very good and uh, another producer on board and it, people are reading it and liking it and it's like it was something I started as a total lark thing like also it's a very weird subject and I thought no one 
will ever, and in fact, I had a very good director friend of mine tell me after he read it, he's like, it's great, no one's ever gonna make this, <laughs> never. <laughs> And so, but then they were very, very interested. And so we're gonna still pitch it around other places. And it's like, you don't know, you know, you put your, you throw your stuff out there. And just the act of being creative, I think, keeps you creative. And it's important to have other things besides, if you put all your creative hopes on acting, half the time you're gonna be disappointed. Half the time you're gonna be over the moon. But half the time you'll be disappointed either with the amount of work or the kind of work. So if you have something else that you like too, painting or writing or whatever that thing is, photography, then I think that's really useful because you stay positive and you say like I still have my own thing you can't take my creativity for me you can't judge it you can't judge it for me I, this is mine you know it's important to have that because so many people judge you and you'll hear so many things about yourself even from well-meaning people you know well Camille Camille does this too much Camille does that too much and it's like well I'm just doing the best I can man. <laughs> <laughs>